for the Great British Debate this hour, and I'm asking, should the NHS Jihad demo leader have his doctor's licence revoked? Now, it's been revealed that Abdul Wahid, the leader of an extremist Islamic group, works as an NHS GP under a different name. Now, the patients of Dr Wahid Asif Shida in Harrow have expressed shock at their GP's supposed double life. The group he leads sparked outrage last weekend when members chanted jihad during a rally outside the Egyptian and Turkish embassies in London, and they called for uh, Muslim armies to attack Israel. So for the Great British Debate this hour, I'm asking, should the NHS Jihad demo leader have his doctor's licence revoked? Well, debate to discuss this, I'm joined by political commentator Peter Spence and cultural historian of the University of Leeds, Dr Philip Kisley, and former Labour MP Stephen Pound. OK, so I'm going to start uh, with you. Dr Philip, um, what do you think about that? What's your view on this one? Well, bearing in mind what's just happened over the last uh, three weeks since the pogrom on uh, the 7th of October, it's absolutely outrageous that uh, a, a jihadi GP should be allowed to work in the NHS. I mean, uh, if you just think about it, you know, he's calling for blood at weekends and then Monday through Friday, he's expected to care for uh, Jewish patients, but not only Jewish patients, women and, and, and gay patients as well. Um, it, for me, it has a, a, a greater resonance because I'm not only thinking about the very clear and present danger he represents to uh, patients and particular patients at that. Mm. I'm also thinking about really the infiltration of a kind of hardline, authoritarian, um, anti-British kind of view that a view of the world that has taken hold in the institutions, particularly the universities, but also the media as well over the last. Uh, well, over the last 10 years or so. So for me, he's representative, just to finish the point, he's representative of all of those things. And he's a very, very worrying figure. I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's using a, a false name. Yeah. He's calling for the death of Jews. Yeah, well, although some people interpret jihad as something else. I mean, it doesn't necessarily uh, interpret it as that. Let's go to Peter Spence, a political commentator. Peter. Yes, indeed. It's a very valid point you make, Nana, that indeed jihad does actually mean two things. It means go to war, or it means cleanse your soul. And I mean, I, I, it is perfectly within the bounds of possibility, it seems to me, that the General Medical Council will have this story drawn to their attention, and it's perfectly possible that they will act in whatever way they think fit. I'm, I'm sure they would. At the same time, I think it's also quite likely on the back of this story that the practice where this particular doctor works and has worked for many years will feel the need to contact their patients, probably by email, I'd guess, and explain the situation mm. and maybe give his side of the argument. But the Daily Mail has used also loaded language about what is an incredibly complex and layered um, um, set of, of, of pain that's that's engulfed so much of the Middle East, notably the Israelis and indeed the Palestinians. And they have painted to my to my eye a crudely and gratuitously oversimplistic picture of of what is actually going on, for which reason I would argue they've done a hatchet job on this guy and I don't buy it. Well, no, the Daily Mail are not here to defend themselves, and I don't think that's fair comment, is it? Because really, let's bear in mind, well, they, they are... No, no, but that's not fair yeah. comment. First of all, they're not here to defend themselves, that's the first thing. But secondly, uh, if he is a doctor and he is calling for jihad, which has a double meaning, but he's also changed his name, let's not forget, that's the essence of this conversation here. And even when you tell that story, that doesn't sound good. So I don't think that's the Daily Mail doing a hatchet job. I think this is somebody who's moonlighting in a very unsavoury manner. Uh, Stephen Pound. I wouldn't want him anywhere near me with a hypodermic needle. I can tell you that for a kickoff. Look, the reality <laughs> is he's a wrong one. Um, he's actually using a false name. Therefore, as a self-employed person, because don't forget, GPs don't work for the NHS. GPs work for themselves. You know, they, that, right back to 1948, they were completely separate. So, you know, the NHS can't boot him out, much as I think, you know, we should. However, the General Medical Council can look at his licence to practice. And I think the fact that he's been using a false name, that actually 
flags up a real, real problem anyway. But what I'd like to, I'd like to give this so-and-so a taste of his own medicine. Let's pile on down to his surgery, stand outside and start shouting for, you know, some, something completely opposite of what he's shouting for. And just actually say, look, this up with this, we will not put. I'm sorry. It's not right. You're supposed to be a doctor. You're supposed to be healing people. You're supposed to be a figure of some significance and importance and respectability within the community, not some tub thumping jihadi loon strutting the streets of London, calling for people to be slaughtered, murdered. No, he's a wrong one. Let's get him out. Yeah. And do, uh, do you think, because, look, you can't be, you know, learning the Hippocratic Oath where you're not going to harm anybody and then talking about jihad, even though it has a double meaning, when you've also changed your name. I mean, I'm, I'm going to come back to, to yeah. Peter on that one, because, you know, you, you're trying to say the Daily Mail's doing a hatchet job. I, I know, I, I've written for the Daily Mail, and I, and I write for them now, and I know. That, that, yeah, but uh, but I, I know full well that there's a huge process to make sure that you, you're not making things up. They can't just say anything. So they are simply reporting this situation. And remember the work they did with the immigration situation as well. That was fantastic work. That was no hatchet job. It was fantastic work. So on this, they've exposed somebody who would have carried on practising had it not been potentially for them exposing it. I mean, what do you say to that, Peter? Well, I mean, I too worked for the Daily Mail. I cut my teeth there in Fleet Street, when it actually was Fleet Street, believe it or not. So I'm very conversant with the techniques of journalism, which is, it's not that you make things up, but you make choices about which bits you put in and which bits you leave out. Yeah, but, and but this, no, 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 but the, let's stay the with the nuance of words. No, 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 let's stay with the point here. You can't, you can't blame them. They're, they're not, they have not done, they are not culpable for this. This is somebody who has changed their name and using a different name whilst they practice as a, as a doctor and have been found to be on a pro-Palestine march calling for jihad. That's, and that's what they've exposed. That's, I'm glad they've done that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, like I say, I think it's very likely this matter will come to the attention of the General Medical Council and they might take the appropriate, whatever they regard to be, the, oh, I'm sure they will take whatever they regard to be the appropriate sanctions. I just say again, and with some emphasis, do not rush to judgment. Don't rush to judgment. What do you, what is, I don't think there's much to judge. Dr. Philip Kisley, what do you think? It's remarkable, isn't it, how yeah. uh, context is brought into play sometimes and not in other times. I mean, we're, we're thinking about the word jihad here, and this is at an anti-Israel demo. Hundreds of thousands of people chanting for, for Jewish blood. I think we know what jihad means in that context. There is no grey area. But when it comes to, um, I'm, I'm really interested to, to know what people thought about um, the actual pogrom on, on, on the on the seventh, when when uh, young children were raped and murdered, when old people mm. were were exactly the same raped and murdered, where bodies were desecrated and spat on. We didn't get a whole load of complexity and nuance and thought then what we got actually was total silence from the institutions and from you know people who would uh, actually defend this character he is a wrong and he's certainly a wrong one. actually defend this character people just wait until all of that you know slightly goes away and then they start and then they start defending the indefensible and and really, it's just, it's unbelievable to listen to that you would actually think that, oh, we need to, we need to stop and think here before someone who's using a false name uh, is calling for jihad on the streets of London. We need to stop and think before he should stop practicing. That's absolute nonsense. Of course we don't. We don't need to stop and think. We, we stop him practicing and we think about deporting him. Well, yeah, if, if, if he can be deported, if he can be deported. But, but also, I mean, there, were, there was anti-Semitic, I think there was anti-Semitic stuff on social media as well. So I think that there's, there, it, there's more complexity to the story. So it's not as, you know, it's not as cut dry as it, as it sounds. Well, there was a lot more going on with that doctor as well. So uh, let me come to you each then. So uh, Stephen Pound, um, what do you think? Yeah. Should he have his nice... No, no, I'm not, I'm not going to email him to say I love you, but I do... I do respect you, and I think you're absolutely right to pick up on the Hippocratic Oath. The Hippocratic Oath, which every single doctor, doesn't matter whether the GP or consultant or surgeon or whatever level, starts off by saying, first, do no harm. Yeah. This man has done harm. So Let's get shot of him. 
Yeah, get shot of him. Uh, he, he, he should not be. He should not be practicing as a GP. Practicing on the public with public money. Peter Spencer, should well, should, should he stay? The organisation, the organisation that he heads, pur 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 purports to be non-violent. Therefore, it is oversimplistic to call them. Ext it, I only say it purports to be. I didn't say it is, but it, that's what it claims so, to so, be. So and you, that's the so, problem here. So you'd here. let him carry I mean, on practicing? Yes or no? Because I've got to move on. You'd let him carry on practicing? Yes or no? Until the GMC chuck him out. Yeah, until they chuck him out. So I, I, well, I wouldn't go and see him. Uh, Dr. Philip, yes or no? Should He's a clear and present danger. He's got to be taken away from practice absolutely right now. And bearing in mind, just very quickly, no, no, bearing in mind that the organisation he fronts is, is illegal in Germany. It's a terrorist organisation. There is that as well. Let's not forget that. Wilson, thank you very much. Dr. Philip Kisley, also Stephen Pound and also uh, Peter Spencer. Thank you so much for your thoughts. Great to have your thoughts. Well, what do you think? Should he be allowed to carry on? Should he have his licence revoked?